Hello and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Bud Kwok, and the show is Community Service Spotlight. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Today, I think our show may be one of our most interesting shows. I mean, I know I say that almost every week, but today we have Ricky Burrs with New Pathways in Melbourne, Kentucky. Melbourne, Kentucky. And that, what's, where's that at? We're located at 3233 Shaw Road in Melbourne, uh, which is about halfway between Paducah and Mayfield. Graves County. Graves County. Across the border. Just across the border, yeah. Dark side. Yeah, you have to cross <laughs> over to get to where we are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot, of talk, lot to talk about today. We've got a lot to cover. Mm -hmm. But why don't we start out with your contact information? We're going to get to that pretty soon anyway. If somebody wanted to contact you, and I know the audience really doesn't know if they want to contact you yet, but we'll, right. we'll t talk about this again later on in the show. Uh, what is, if somebody's got a pencil right now, how would they get a hold of you? Yeah. Well, New Pathways for Children is who we are. Uh, our phone number is 270-674-6061. Uh, we've also got a website. They can find us at NPFC. It just stands for New Pathways for Children, but it's .net. Net. So it's NPFC.net. <laughs> and uh, they can find us there on the web or give us a call. Uh, or come out and visit the campus. We would love for folks to drive out and see where we are. Now, we'll have that later on. We'll have your emails and all that on the screen so for, for, for our audience to, to copy off later on. But what is New Pathways? The average person would say, well, what, do you, what is that? What is yeah. it? That's not a church, is it? No, it's not. Uh, New Pathways began in 1990, and we're a child care facility. Uh, some folks in western Kentucky had a vision for taking care of uh, hurting children, children that had been neglected or abandoned or uh, in bad circumstances and for some reason can't live at home any longer. And uh, New Pathways is a place where they can come and be taken care of and live there. And over the years we've had uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of children who have been in our facility. Oh my goodness, and I know back when I was growing up, there were orphanages around that mm -hmm. did some of the stuff that you guys do. I know uh, maybe kids in similar situations, like you said. What, what exactly, uh, is it, did they, they, they spend the night there, they eat there, do they go to school mm -hmm. there? Basically what happens is we become their new home. Uh, all of their basic needs, food, clothing, shelter, we meet in our facilities, we have uh, three homes, two homes for boys, one home for girls. Uh, our children go to the public school in Graves County. And uh, right now, all of our children are elementary age, so they're all in the elementary school uh, out at Lowe's, which is near our campus. Uh, we also provide counseling. Uh, there's a lot of trauma when families, for whatever reason, the children have to come to us and there can be a variety of reasons that they may come. And when they do, we want to help them adjust to that. Uh, but we love them. We want to take care of them. We also uh, are a faith-based agency and so we provide a spiritual component get them involved in church and church activities, youth group activities, uh, so that we can be a part of helping encourage uh, spirituality in their lives. So they go to the, the, the local school, so they're involved in all the local, lo school things too, sports, activities like that, maybe uh, after school events and things. Ex do you exactly. Have, have big buses that bus them back and forth? Or is that well, actually, the county school system has a bus. It comes right down the road to our oh, property. Good. So they get on the bus uh, at the end of the drive in the morning and get off there in the afternoon. And uh, our staff uh, take them to the bus and get off, uh, are there to meet them when they get off, uh, just like a parent would. And, that, and that's really what we try to become is. Uh, parents and, and guides and uh, mentors and, and influencers for good in their life because so many of them have really missed a lot of those things. 
So it's, it's more like the, when you go off to college, you know, you live mm -hmm. in a dormitory, you go to the cafeteria, uh, and you go to classes, and you come back. To, it's similar maybe to college. It's just kind of the situation where they go off to school and come, come back. To the, it's like a dormitory, I guess. Yep. Well, it, we have a house. You know, each child has their own room. Uh, we have a kitchen and uh, somebody fixing the meals, and they sit down at the table and eat a meal together. Uh, we try to... Uh, simulate as closely as possible a home because we feel like that's best for the children uh, to get them into a routine and, and it's interesting bud that uh, children when they come out of the bad situations that they've unfortunately been in they really respond to the structure uh, of a schedule they know when they're going to eat and the meals are going to be good and nutritious and healthy uh, they know they're going to be clean. They know they have their own bed. Uh, and they get accustomed to that really quickly. And we see them, their behaviors are better. They do better in school. Uh, they're ready to interact and play with other children uh, better. So it, just a lot of things about the environment and the structure uh, that are good and positive for them. And they respond very well to that. And that's exciting for us to see those guys uh, starting to make improvements and, and grow. And they feel like somebody really cares about them. Yeah, they do. Uh, maybe and finally for a, in a long time they've been in such a bad situation. Yeah, they do. Because so many of them, the, the real problem is neglect. And, you know, you were talking about orphanages earlier. Uh, we're not an orphanage. We, you know, we are uh, a home for children. Uh, and in the truest sense, maybe the children aren't orphaned because they do have a parent somewhere. But in reality, they've been orphaned. Uh, they're little guys who have wanted somebody to hold them, rock them, hug on them, love them. And nobody would do that. And so it's exciting. I'll tell you a little story. Sure. On Saturday <laughs> uh, evening. Uh, my wife and I were over at the house and uh, the children, we have seven children in this one house, ages two to nine, and uh, it's bedtime and we're trying to help the staff just get them in bed and see the kids a little bit and spend some time. Uh, the two-year-old uh, went to bed, laid down in the bed a minute and kind of started crying and whining a little. And it was obvious she just wanted somebody to hold her. Well, I got the chance. And you talk about love. Two-year-old little girl laid her head up on my shoulder in about two minutes. She's sound asleep. And everything's fine yeah. just because somebody was there to hold her. Well, I know how that is. I've got a three-year-old grandbaby and she only sleeps all night long about twice a week. So I, I know you understand. She wants somebody to hold her for a while yeah. and she'll fall right back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, do kids come and once they come, do they stay there their whole Career, school career or do they come and go? Uh, how's that usually work? Well, circumstances vary uh, because uh, we don't want to take children away from what's best for them, but we do want them to be in a safe environment. And because we're a private referral agency, uh, somebody who has custody of that child has to say, we believe it would be best for them to be at New Pathways. Uh, sometimes they may look and say, we want them to be there for a year or two, or it might be longer. It just depends on the circumstances. It can vary. We certainly are open uh, to doing whatever's best for the child. That's our ultimate goal. If, if they uh, need to be there for a year or two and the family can be reconciled, things can uh, be improved where the child can go back and we know they're safe and healthy, all their needs are being met, uh, that's good. We want the family to be together. But if the need or the situation is such that they need to be with us for a long term, we're going to take care of them. That's yeah. what we do. And you have a, a, a board of directors or something that maybe helps with those decisions. Mm -hmm. I know you wouldn't want to be straddled with that type yeah. of thing. <laughs> we do have a board uh, who oversees. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. I have been from our inception in 1990. Uh, have a great board of directors from around the region, men and women who have a real passion for serving children. Uh, we have an excellent staff. A lot of those decisions you're talking about are made by our treatment director and our program director. Uh, Joseph Williams is our treatment director. Jan Jones is our program director. 
and they're the ones working up close with the situation, uh, with the child, with the family member. Uh, referrals sometimes come from uh, courts, uh, court designated workers or others uh, who are aware of situations. And so they're doing those kind of things, uh, setting up an individualized treatment plan, determining what do we need to do to take care of this child? What's the situation? Uh, they're keeping me informed. I'm in turn informing the board, but uh, they're the professionals, so we want them taking care of the children because they that's what they do. Do you work with the parents too some, or, or do the, are they, I know the parents say, for instance, they can't ha take care of the child, they drop it off there, or you guys mm -hmm. take over, but maybe do you, do you stay in touch with the parents and find, and, and do you, does, do they get help yeah. somehow too, or? Absolutely. Our, our view is that the best thing that can happen for the child is to be in their home if it's healthy. Uh, the reason they have to come out of the home to us is because the situation is not healthy or it's not safe. Uh, there are other problems that are going on, uh, but we do. We offer counseling and all of our services are at no charge to the family or the child. Uh, and we'll talk about that in That's a minute. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, but we're willing to offer counseling to uh, the parent or parents if they're grandparents uncles or aunts, whoever might be involved in caring for that child uh, because we'd like to get things better so the child could be with the people uh, who are their family. If that's not possible, then we're willing to step in and become their new family to help care for them. Yeah, and you, you talked about the courts sometimes. That probably, when you get into the child abuse, Type, mm -hmm. Those type things where they're taken away, maybe not given up by the parents, but taken away because of, yeah. of child abuse, like with this, uh, the uh, any kind of abuse is really on a hot topic right now. So yes. that's that's where you get the, the ones from court. And maybe they've been abused. Yes, we yeah. can sometimes in those situations of neglect or abuse. Uh, a judge could look at a situation and say New Pathways is a, a program and a place I'd like for this child to be. Depending on exactly what the circumstances are, the judge might ask us, will you work with the parent? Will you try to uh, help them learn better parenting skills? We offer classes uh, for parents. We offer counseling free of charge to them. Uh, we're willing to connect them with other resources in the community. There, there are great resources in this community, both in McCracken and Graves County, Paducah and Mayfield, and, and we serve in both areas because you know we're halfway between, so a lot of referrals come from Paducah, McCracken County. We get a lot from Graves and Mayfield. Uh, so we have working relationships with a lot of uh, agencies and a lot of the people who are similarly trying to help children and families. And you're kind of unique, aren't you? There's not a lot of uh, other areas or groups that do what you do, aren't you? You're the well, only one I know about around here. Yeah, we are a little bit unique in the area. Of course, there are a lot of children. Unfortunately, uh, in Kentucky right now, there are over 7,600 children who are out of their home in care in state custody. Now the children we have are not in state custody, so there are additional numbers beyond it. that. Uh, so there's a great need, but in Western Kentucky, we are uh, unique in that we are a private referral agency and mm -hmm. are uh, able to take children out of a lot of different circumstances and help in a lot of different ways. And, and we wanna do that. Uh, we, we're positioned because of uh, great individuals who've supported us for a long time and helped with good facilities. We've got a great staff who really care about children and there's a lot of need. So uh, we want to, we have served children for a long time and we want to continue that. Well, let's, let's talk about the numbers. About how many children do you have at your facility? on a normal day, girls and boys <laughs> separate. Of course, you well, keep them separate, right? You, yeah. I think you... Well, we, we do uh, at certain ages. Uh, we have the unique uh, capability of keeping sibling groups uh, together in some of our homes. That's and great. when we can do that, uh, we like to do that. Right now, we have 
uh, two sibling groups, uh, four brothers and sisters and three brothers and sisters, and they're able to live in a house together. And so that's a neat thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but our census varies. Uh, you know, it goes from uh, seven to 10 to 25 or 30, depending on what's happening at any given time and uh, the situations and uh, children moving through different circumstances, something uh, different at home that maybe allows some to return, uh, others who are coming into our program new. Uh, we have the, the capability of serving effectively somewhere around 35 children at any one time. Uh, that's challenging, especially depending that's on large. their ages. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. A, it's a big operation. So <laughs> it is. It's not just a, a couple of people taking care of a few kids. How many people do you have volunteers, full-time workers? What, what, what's your staff look like? Well, we do have a staff uh, currently of about uh, a dozen people. Uh, we've had as many as 25 or 30, uh, depending on circumstances and situations. Uh, we have a number of volunteers, and we uh, welcome volunteers. Uh, we've got a 25-acre campus, so there are always a lot of things that need to be done around there. Uh, we have three homes, an office building. There are always maintenance things that need to be uh, done. It's hard for our facilities manager to keep up with all of them. Uh, we have needs with the children. Uh, sometimes, just like uh, Saturday night, I was over there uh, able to, you know, hold the little girl. Uh, I had someone uh, a couple of days ago ask me, said, would it be okay if I just came out and rocked those babies? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. would be great because, you know, they, they want and need to be held and loved and nurtured in that way. And, you know, sometimes it's just not enough of us uh, staff to go around so volunteers can be very helpful. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is you, 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 the more the better. You, the, yeah. you, you know, the, the kids say, you're rocking this one, this one over here. What, what, what. And so, that's typically what happens is, you know, you don't just get one wanting you to hold them. You usually get about three at the mm -hmm. same time. And mm -hmm. uh, so, that, that's neat, but it also asks, requires a little more help and yeah. assistance. So, so volunteers are good. You're talking about volunteers. What if somebody out there wanted to volunteer or was interested? Do they just call one of those numbers that you they could email? Call, they could call one of those numbers or email us. Jan Jones, our program director, would be the primary uh, person who coordinates with them to volunteer. Uh, because uh, we have children, we have to do a little bit of background check that, and my next, yeah. make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to protect the children that we have. Uh, so, you know, we have a form that we ask people, fill this information in, allow us, give us permission to do the background check. Uh, we'll take care of doing that. If everything comes back okay, then uh, there are a lot of ways to volunteer and to help us. So the volunteers come in in the morning and stay however many hours they can. And Mornings, uh, afternoons, Saturday, Sunday afternoons. Uh, we have folks who come in uh, to help sort clothes in our clothes uh, closet. Uh, we have folks who come in work in our food pantry and see what we have mm -hmm. there. Because we get a lot of donations and we need donations of those things. Food, uh, clothes. Uh, our children often come in uh, with what they have on their back and a lot of times it's pretty sad yeah. so uh, we we need clothes immediately when they come in like that and having our own clothes closet uh, and a lot of people and churches Sunday school classes school classes school groups like beta and other clubs uh, often will do drives for food or clothes and help us out that way and we can always use those kinds of things. And if somebody has a yard sale and they get done, they've got a bunch of clothes left or similar things, yep. you, you're, you just bring them on down. and Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. Most of the time, you know, uh, when I was growing up, Bud, and you probably the same way, uh, I had older cousins and I got the hand-me-downs, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. they were always clean. They weren't always new. And, and that's, we feel like we need to be 
good stewards of our resources and mm -hmm. so if if people donate good clothes to us that are clean uh, we put them on our children let them wear them to school and play in them and uh, we can wash them and keep them clean and they can wear those won't hurt them a bit recycle reuse or Ex what's the third one or <laughs> <laughs> exactly repair i don't know yeah uh, with now this sounds like a big operation but I, and i was going to ask you how you afforded all this but one, one more question before we got off that is, do the kids have chores? Do the children have a, uh, I know I, 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 my father's had a big family mm -hmm. and they had a calendar and everybody knew what their chores were for the, the and then they'd flip the calendar over and, yeah. and everybody changed chores, but that, I didn't know if that yeah. was something you took advantage they do. of. They every, do, every child is responsible for keeping their room clean, uh, which includes uh, having their things picked up, putting their dirty clothes into their basket uh, to be washed, making up their bed. Even the two-year-old, you know, she's learning really? <laughs> uh, that it's her responsibility to keep her room cleaned up. And of course, you know, a two-year-old's clean room looks much different than uh, a ten-year-old or an adult would. And, but we're coaching and helping her learn this is your responsibility to keep right. your room clean and picked up. And the older children, we add some chores around the house. Uh, the boys who are a little older uh, will help with some of the yard work and other things on the outside uh, because we feel like that's an important thing that they need to learn uh, some responsibility, that they need to take care of that's those exactly things right, and yeah. pick up after themselves. Uh, it's really neat to watch at dinner time as they finish, uh, ask to be excused, and then take their uh, plate over to the trash, rake it off, and go place it in the sink. And they mm -hmm. understand, each one of them, that after dinner, that's their responsibility. And nobody else is responsible for cleaning up for them that they need to do that. So uh, there are a lot of things that age appropriate chores and responsibility because we want them to understand how important that is. Now I have another show I do is called Master Gardening and that's why I was going to ask if you have a garden <laughs> at, the, at New Pathways. Well in the past oh. at times we've tried. We don't currently but it's something that uh, we'd like maybe to get our children exposed to. Yeah I think digging in the dirt I think kids like doing that to begin yeah. with. They're not always handy at it or helpful, <laughs> but they like to dig in the dirt. Yeah. So I think that always teaches them, get them back, back, to, back to the earth. Yes. Now, I was going to ask, how in the world do you afford all this? Yeah. I, it, uh, this this sounds like a big, if you have yeah. 39, 35 or 39 kids, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of clothing. That's yeah. a lot of electricity. That's a lot of, lot of, lot of things. Yes, it is. And uh, it is uh, a big operation. Uh, and all of our funding comes from private donations, individuals who are interested in what we're doing. Uh, because we're faith-based, churches have been great partners and great supporters. A uh, number of businesses in the local communities, both uh, in Paducah and Mayfield area, have been supporters. Uh, community grants. Uh, you know, private foundations, anything kind of in the private arena, uh, but we don't get government funding. I was going to ask you government funding. You don't yeah. get any of that. We don't get any government funding now. At one right. time we did, uh, but no longer. Say, if, say for instance, now I'm a, somebody's got some, a little bit of money. I just inherited some money. I want to donate. How would they do that? They need to call me you quickly. Personally. <laughs> exactly. Forget those other that, people. That's call right. You. <laughs> call, call me directly and uh, we'll make that happen. And, and there are a lot of different ways for people. Uh, we have a lot of monthly donors. We have people who give a lump sum I one time of, of year. Uh, we have a number of people who make memorial gifts uh, when someone has passed away. People who honor someone that's meant uh, something in, important to them in their life. Uh, businesses we found are looking uh, to help agencies that are serving in the community. So a lot of different pieces there. I'll be darned. Uh, before I forget it, I almost have, I want to mention mm -hmm. this a little earlier. Who was director before you were? Well, you know, it's an inside <laughs> joke here. My dad, Glenn Burse, uh, dad came back to New Pathways in 2010 
uh, and served as director uh, until about a year ago. And, and he and I worked together for about a year in a transition process, and then the board appointed me director. But Dad's connection with New Pathways actually goes back to its beginning in 1990 because he was the president and director of a children's home in Tennessee that helped uh, New Pathways get started and uh, operate the first four or five years before it was turned over to an independent board. I'll be darned, I, I, I don't think I knew that. He, he had, a, had another group in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So he's had a long history with New Pathways. Yes, and I, I know that New Pathways, they started out great, had some problems, and when your dad took over, they, they were and had some financial problems. But Yes, he, it was really a, a very critical time. Uh, you know, uh, it's difficult, nonprofits, uh, it's difficult uh, business model to operate. Uh, because you do rely so much on donations. That was a period of time that uh, had been through a pretty good recession and uh, other things had happened and Dad's experience was very key to turning that around and thankfully now we're in a really good financial position with no debt, uh, but we need a lot of help to keep taking care of children now and going forward. Just because of no debt, you still need that budgeted money and I, you mentioned that number to me earlier about how much it normally is, and that's a lot of money. But evidently, yeah. you've got good contacts, and you get, you're in good shape right now. But yeah. you can, anybody wants to help out, I'm yeah. sure you're... Yeah, we never have enough. And here's right. the thing about where we are. Uh, depending on how much revenue we get, it determines how many children we can take care of. And, mm -hmm. you know, it would break my heart to know that there were three or four children that we that needed our services, we can. needed to take in, and we had to turn them down because we don't have the money. Now the other side of that is we rarely do anything like that because we believe God will take care of and provide and the good other. folks who are our partners will as well. Okay, quickly, what, what are your contact numbers again? Okay, it's New Pathways for Children, 270-674-6061 npfc.net. Of course, I'm Ricky Burst. Jan Jones could be contacted, and we'd love to hear from anybody. Well, thank you for coming today, Ricky. I, I, this is thank real, I you. really learned a lot. And thank our audience for coming. This is Community Service Spotlight. I'm your host, Bud Kwok, and stay, we'll see you next time.